And all of God's people said, praise the Lord. Why don't we stand tonight? Luke chapter number 19 records the triumphal, triumphal entry of Jesus Christ into Jerusalem right before his passion. And it's an amazing story as they, they're laying palm branches out and he's riding in and the children start saying, Hosanna. They are praising God and they're worshiping Jesus and, and are ex proclaiming his goodness. And it was that moment, not that Jesus was declaring himself anything, but it was the praise of children that really upset the religious elite. And Jesus made a profound statement when he said, they said, Jesus, silence these children. And he said, what you don't understand is if these kids will hold back their praise, the rocks themselves would start to cry out in worship. I love the song we're about to sing. It says, I can't hold back my hallelujah. Friends, I don't want any stone to ever take my place. Not only can I not, I am choosing here on a Sunday night in East Texas that I will not hold back my praise because Jesus is worthy of all the praise we can give him. So all over the sanctuary, could you lift your voices, your hearts, and your hands to the Lord Jesus Christ as we begin to sing right now in the name of
Can you lift your voice and magnify the Lord Jesus Christ right now all over the building? Can you let worship arise from your heart and out of your mouth? Can, don't stop that. Keep that going right there. Father, we love you. Jesus, in the middle of our darkest hours, we believe that you are with us. When we feel like we're walking through the valley of the shadow of death, we know your rod and staff. God, they comfort us. Jesus, we give you praise even when we don't feel it. Amen. I feel like that song is so fitting for us. We're fixing to go into prayer. I love that bridge, but not for the same reason you do. I think, it's a, I think it is an ultimate defiance of our situation. That regardless if it's day or night in my world, he still is worthy to be praised. He's still worthy to be worshipped. He's still worthy to have all the adoration I can give him. Friends, I, I'm looking at some of you, and you walked into the house of God, and it's nighttime in your world. You walked in saying, Jesus, I have got to have a touch from glory. And he has stopped this service just for you because he loves you enough to say, I don't want you to stay in that discouraged, downtrodden condition that you walk to the house of God with. Some of you, it's nighttime. Now, while the sun's out, it's nighttime in your world. And you're saying, God, do you know where I am? And he come to remind you that you're not alone. You are not forgotten. Friends, there are times when you don't know what to pray. You don't have the words to pray for yourself. And that's why I'm so thankful for the body of Christ that we can show up in services where we don't have words and we can walk down to the front and say, I don't have, I don't know what to say and I don't know what to pray, but I'm thankful I have a brother or a sister who can lay hands on me when I don't have the words to pray in my dark times and I can feel the peace of God sweep over my soul. So if that's you today, you walked into Eastview saying, I need a touch from God, whether it's physically financially mentally emotionally familially all of the leaves and you say God I have a situation in my world and I need strength from the body of Christ I invite you to come to the front at this time the body of Christ the people of God will pray the prayer of faith and we will believe that God will raise you up and that God will give you courage so if you have a need in your body in your mind in your life would you come to the front at this time all the unspoken requests will you signify by an uplifted hand Lord Jesus, we come before you now. Thank you, sis, for moving. God, we come before you now. We trust and we believe that in you all things are possible. And nothing with you is impossible. Father, we trust you and we stand firm on your word that in our darkest seasons, the hand of God is still with us. When we feel like we're alone in the lion's den, you shut the mouth of the lions. When we're walking through the fiery furnace, we're not burned by our situation because you are comforting us every step of the way. I pray for the healing power of God to flow across this sanctuary. If you want healing in your body, stretch your hands to heaven right now. Lord Jesus, I pray that healing go forward from this building, from this place right here and right now. I pray that you would dispatch angels to meet these needs. And I'm asking God the healing power of the Lord would flow from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet. Jesus, we come to declare that day and night, night and day, we still will worship you in the name of Jesus. God, we trust you here and we trust you. Amen. Can you stretch your hands to heaven all over the sanctuary east view? I wonder if you can tap into what God's wanting to do. There are believers all across this sanctuary that showed up needing a touch from heaven. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. In my day or in my night, I'll let incense arise from my life. Yes, yes. God, we stand firm on your word. Thank you, sis. Thank you, sis. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Would you let praise arise east you from your mouth? Let the praises of God be in your mouth and unto it. Day and night. We let praise arise. Day and night. 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 
Would you let worship rise from your heart today? Would you let worship rise from your heart? No spectators at East View tonight, only participators in worship. God, we love you. We worship you. We adore you, Father. Day and night, night and day. Let the worship arise. Oh, 
Amen. Can we do that just for another second? Lord Jesus, we love you. God, we are so thankful for what you've done in this place tonight. We're thankful for a move of the Holy Ghost. We're thankful for your spirit encouraging hearts and lives that are in this building. And we give you thanks. And we give you thanks. Hallelujah. Ah. Help us sing the simple chorus just for a second. Jesus, on the mountain or in the valley, I'm choosing to exalt you, Lord. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Help this praise team sing this one more time. If you know it, sing it out. Sing it out, Lord. Jesus, thank you, Lord. Are you thankful you made out the house of God tonight? Brother Marty, I got a couple nods. I got just a couple. Are you thankful you made out to the house of God tonight? Amen. Listen, I've, uh, I've, I've traveled a lot of places, Pastor Bullard, and I've been to a lot of churches that would give anything to feel what we just felt. I'm talking to apostolic churches that would give anything to experience what we just experienced are you thankful you made out to the house of God I've been in countries that would give anything to experience what we just experienced are you grateful you made out to the house of God his name is worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun the psalmist said to the going down of the same and we've done just that amen amen well, you take a couple of moments, shake five or ten hands, smile at them real big, and let them know that you are grateful they are in the house of God tonight. If I get the E3D promotions team to join me on the platform. Amen, amen, amen. Our ushers are getting ready to receive our Sunday evening tithe and offering at this time. And there are multiple announcements we can go through. But I trust all of you have the ability to receive the church bulletin. If you have the ability to receive the bulletin, will you wave your hand at me? 
Brother Bowler, that's supposed to be 100%. <laughs> we, we all have the ability. Now, whether or not we do it, that's on us. But they have bulletins in the front. If you want to see the thriving community and what we have going on here at Eastview, there's tons of things for every, every family member, every person. Eastview has something for you, for your family, for your kids. Amen. Our ushers are coming to receive our Sunday morning tithe and offering. Lord Jesus, we are so grateful and thankful for the blessings of God. We're thankful for the people of God. I pray that you would bless this offering, the gift and the giver, in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for giving.
Amen, amen. Why don't you be seated for just a couple of moments. Tonight is a very special night for us at Eastview. We are going to recap everything that we've done the last several years in embracing our Destiny campaign. God has done some really amazing things at Eastview and through Eastview. And so we're going to be taking a little bit of time to be able to share with you exactly what God has done through your faithful giving. With that said, though this is a presentation, we are apostolic. And so if you feel like shouting a little bit, Brother Spencer, it's okay, go ahead and shout. If you feel like running the aisles for what God has done through your church, go ahead and run the aisles and give God praise. Though we're having a presentation, we're apostolic, because there are going to be plenty that are worth shouting about. Amen. If you could turn your attention, our senior pastor, Brother Hunt, is coming at this time to give you an introduction to our presentation. Thank you, Brother Gilliam. I'm so excited about what God has done. <laughs> to him be all the glory. To him be all the praise. A few years ago, we felt that, like the Lord had some plan for us. So I got away and I began to seek the Lord. God, I need some direction. I need to know what you're doing. I need to know what I need to do. And God gave me a man's name, and I called that man Brother Justin Hanthorne. I said, Brother Hanthorne, here's where we are. Somebody gave me your name years ago. You and I have never talked since that time. But I really do believe that the Lord has spoken to me to call you and get you involved in the future of Eastview. And so we did. We got together. He met with our team. And what a team God gave us. What a great team that helped us launch this wonderful E3D campaign. What impressed me about the campaign was not so much the financial part of it, but the spiritual part of it. Not only from Brother Hanthorne, who expressed this is a spiritual campaign. We're going to take this church spiritually on a journey that's going to be further than where we are right now. And then God moved on another man, Brother Kleindest, who came and spoke to us. And he spoke to us a prophetic word that if this church would become liberal and aggressive in our prayer, in our worship, and in our giving, that God was going to pour out blessings upon this church. And he has. Amen. It's amazing how God brought those two lives together to be a blessing and a direction for Eastview. So we launched the campaign, and COVID came. We had this place decorated. I mean, we were just going, and we were going to get it done. And COVID said, you're not even coming to church. going to be hard to launch it. So we did something that's never been done before. We told Brother Hanthorne, we're going to have to shut this part down. But later... When all the COVID was, uh, all the restrictions were over, we relaunched. Brother Handler said, that's never been done. I don't know how it's going to affect it. Well, church, you and God did awesome. When that relaunch took place, you're talking about excitement, faith. So tonight, I want to share, before I turn this service over to our, our team and I'm so thankful for this wonderful team. I pulled a little bit of information out of the letter that I sent you as we launched this E3D campaign. Embracing our destiny in a contemporary context, we often view destiny as a foreordained event or a fixed fortune. But for the Christian, destiny is more of a divine calling. From time to time throughout the scriptures, God revealed to his people a vision of a preferred future. It was a divine opportunity, but never a guaranteed outcome. God has a grand vision for our church, a vision that is built on the sacrifice of preceding generations. And it's almost as if I can see some of those great saints of God sitting in this congregation right now. Their impact on Eastview will be until the rapture of this church. And that vision that was built on preceding generations will impact our local church, our community for generations to come. The DNA of Eastview is one of faith, miracles, 
and revival. Embracing our destiny is both a celebration of our rich heritage and a declaration that we believe God has so much more in store for us. Someone said the future depends on what we do in the present. Preparing for future opportunities is an act of faith. Being prepared is the key to walking through the open doors that God will place before us in our future. And we cannot simply wait for the doors to open and then try to prepare. Just as Abraham acted in faith and went out, not knowing where he was going, Eastview is called to embrace by faith and preparation a future that we cannot fully see right now. Someone told me yesterday was the 10th year anniversary that we broke ground for our Family Life Center. And here we are, almost 10 years to the day, celebrating what God has done. And I'm not going to tell you everything he's done. That's what they're going to do. But there is... There was no small undertaking, but together we seized the moment and a literal change in the spiritual landscape of our church and our community took place. We had a pivotal opportunity. Thank you, Eastview, for allowing God to use you to take advantage of that open door. Praise the Lord. Tonight is very exciting for me, and I know a lot of people. We are so thankful to be here tonight. Sometimes uh, we thought we might never get to this point. I would like to start by saying, uh, and I think it's appropriate, thank you to our, our pastors. Uh, they had the foresight, the foresight to put this campaign together and for it to be a success, and we would not be here without their leadership. With that being said, tonight is a time for celebration. If I've learned anything in the past few years, it's to give thanks while you have a chance. There's an old song that says, you are to praise the Lord while you have a chance. God has done many things through this campaign. Many miracles, signs, wonders have taken place in the last three years, and I have no doubt they will only continue from here. One of our goals, and the reason I'm up here, is to speak about uh, the goal of partnering with local area churches to help them spread the gospel as well. A few things that God has enabled us to do within and through this campaign, and we have some slides that will show you. Uh, one would be for our Lifeline team to travel to different churches, including Hallsville and Nacogdoches, uh, to promote that ministry, which is amazing. And Brother Daniel and Brother Hutch, uh, you guys are amazing for that. Also, we have uh, been, had the opportunity to provide uh, help to other churches locally. We provided uh, dehumidifiers for Zavala Church when they were in need. We provided uh, maintenance for the church in Aura, the big city of Aura. <clears throat> we provided rent for, uh, to help with the rent at uh, Westside Apostolic Church here locally. Also, we provided, uh, we were able to help provide uh, for the parking lot and sheetrock work at the new Spanish work uh, that we were a part of. These are just a few things that I am thankful for through this campaign that God has used Eastview mightily to help others, not only our church, but other churches to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I am so thankful for tonight and what God is going to do in this place tonight. Amen. Amen. Why don't you clap your hands and thank the Lord for what he did through you. Amen. So this campaign has also afforded our church the ability to make some upgrades around the campus that were needed. It was a part of our vision that we also continue moving our church forward in things that we need to accomplish. It's given us the ability to address areas that our pastors and their and their their visions, all that we needed to address. Since the start of our campaign, we've been able to increase security on our campus during services and also during off times as well through the addition of access control. 
Access Control has given us the ability to lock our campus down when we need it locked down and to have it open when we need it open. It's made us more secure and more efficient than we were before. In addition to access control, we've been able to increase security with the addition of security cameras. Friends, listen, our world is crazy, and there is, <laughs> I don't think you can have too many cameras monitoring what's happening. And so it has also given us the ability to install security cameras all over our campus for the benefit of every young person, every child, and every saint. And somebody said, amen. <laughs> also, since the beginning of our campaign, We've been able to brighten our parking lot at night with the addition of lights. And somebody should say, thank the Lord. <laughs> Listen, when you walk out of church and it's real dark, it's very nice to have the light. So we're thankful for the additional lighting that we've been able to do since the beginning. Also, we've been able to have a significant remodel on the children's wing of Eastview. If you've not been over there since the remodel, I'm certain you have, but we have been blessed to have our children's ring remodeled and our children love it. It was done professionally. It is top notch. It's great for our kids. It's great for the parents. It's great for our visitors when they walk in, they see something nice, fresh and new. And for that, we are very thankful for creating an environment for our children to worship God in. The last highlight since the beginning of our campaign, we've been able to upgrade several things in the music department. And we're very thankful for our music ministry. And somebody said, amen. 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 We've been able to get an entire new drum set. We've been able to get a new keyboard, a new organ, all wireless mics and choir risers for the choir that we have. And so we are very thankful for the giving that you've given to the E3D campaign that has given us the ability to make some nuts needed upgrades all over our campus. Amen. God bless you. Everyone say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. I told them, I said, they're coming with their iPads and stuff. I'm coming old-fashioned. <laughs> Vision point that I have the privilege of uh, speaking of this evening is community involvement. Not only do I, does our campus actually have a phenomenal location, it's a phenomenal view, phenomenal campus across the board, but we also want to know that we actually have community involvement. Some of those areas that we've been able to really get involved in, one of them is assisting with an organization, uh, excuse me, an organization and assisting at getting off the ground of the Lufkin Christian Academy. And this is going on the second year. They're going to be finishing that. Can you say amen? Praise the Lord. Wonderful, wonderful. Also, we also help in the Pregnancy Help Center, and there's a lot of other nonprofit organizations that we help in. It's enabled us to reach out into the community church. Amen. Also, we're involved with the, it's an organization called Impact Lufkin, and also with the services that Brother Hunt has been ministering also and across the city and doing different things that they've been involved with. A wonderful time to actually have community involvement. And there's one also we just had recently, and we started during this campaign called Celebration Saturday. And you'll know if you was here, there was a lot of visitors around here. A wonderful time, amen. Come on, we've been able to implement that. It's been a success, and I guarantee it's growing, amen. It's affecting our community, amen. The last one I want to touch in is, is actually one that we started as well. The wonderful tree out there that we bring in is not about the tree. I've heard our minister say it so many times. But when it's bringing the community together, getting them involved together, Church, that's what it's about, amen. It's community involvement, amen. I can say it this way. Much is happening in Eastview, amen. In the last three years, Eastview United Pentecostal Church has fulfilled the great commission of Jesus Christ to go into all the world and to preach the gospel to every creature. It is an absolute privilege of mine to announce to you in the last three years, Eastview, that means you, have given well over $200,000 to missions around the world. You have made it possible, Eastview, for people all across this nation and all around our world to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is no small feat for a church of any size. Are you thankful for what God has done through you in the last three years. Some of you are wondering why you've been so blessed the last three years. God cannot help but bless people who bless his kingdom. God cannot help but bless people who bless his people. And God cannot help but bless people who further his mission. And the mission of Jesus Christ is to seek and to save the lost among every people group, among every nation, and among every language. And Eastview, you have fulfilled the mission of Jesus Christ. 
And so when the church is fulfilling its mission, is it any wonder why? The Lord is pouring out blessings all around us because when you bless God's mission, God blesses you. When you bless people that make it possible to preach the gospel around the world, is it any wonder why God keeps pouring blessings your way? Let me give you just a few highlights of what your missions giving has done the last three years. It started off with the missionaries to the Philippines, and it was really spontaneous and miraculous as Pastor Hunt presented the need in our church, that means you, in less than 60 seconds, raised over $25,000 to install solar in the Philippines for Hope Village. It was a tremendous moment in our church, and it's something that we should give God praise for. Lord, we are so thankful for what you've done through the people of God. In the last three years, Eastview has sent Allie, Brooklyn, Luke, Caleb, Eli, and Elizabeth on AYC trips around the world and North America. Your young adults have experienced Jesus Christ in phenomenal and impactful ways as they watched people not in East Texas, as they've watched people around the world receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and they themselves have experienced life-changing moments with Jesus Christ as they engage in the greatest commission that we've ever been given to preach the gospel around the world. You sent Sister Vivian to Switzerland where she was able to bless the entire nation of Switzerland with the gospel of Jesus Christ. She was a strength to the missionaries. She was a blessing to the people. And friends, she's going back again. Brother Landon was also involved in several mission trips to the Czech Republic and AYC trips, and we're thankful for what God is doing in Brother Landon both then and now. He's in glo he's serving in global missions from Eastview United Pentecostal Church. <laughs> Amen. And if I can sincerely say thank you, in the last three years, you've sent me almost exclusively from Eastview. Almost all of the funds came entirely from this church. First, in 2022, you sent me to Haiti, where I witnessed the power of God move over people that had nothing, and God touched them in profound ways. I watched people in the nation of Haiti speak in tongues for the very first time as the power of God filled their life. I watched God do miracles. Eastview, that is through you. That is a result. That is a direct result of you giving to God in missions. And last year, you sent me to Central Asia, where I found this out. I found this out this last week. When I was in Central Asia, for the first time, the United Pentecostal Church held a family conference in Central Asia. And your missions giving made that possible for families in Central Asia to be strengthened, where we watched pastors' kids for the first time receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, where we watched God pour out miracle after miracle, and where we saw two people, two pastors' kids, baptized in the nearby lake in the wonderful name of Jesus. Eastview, that happened because you were intentional with your missions giving, giving again over $200,000. That is something that we should rejoice about. God has done more than just bless our local assembly. But because you made in your heart to give, God has blessed the world through Easter. We're going to keep this moving. Quizzers, come on up. I get nervous when I'm by myself. And while they're coming, I do just want to reiterate, I'm so thankful for the leadership of Pastor Hunt, Pastor Bullard. It's one thing to take on a campaign like this. It's another thing to finish it. Thank you for your service throughout this entire campaign. And to all of you that served on the various committees to get it kicked off and going, thank you. Uh, Brother Bullard, or excuse me, Brother Hunt said it well. Brother Hanthorne has a plan. And his plan was for us to enact this campaign. And it was a massive undertaking from the beginning. And I want to say personally a thank you to Sister Vicki. I have warded you to death the last few days. Thank you for all of your work throughout this campaign. Sister Maxine, thank you for all the times that we spent in your office trying to figure this out. Thank you so much for what you do, diligently trying to track this money that came in. Sister Gilliam, thank you for your help through every presentation, 
through everything that you have done. Again, working on tight deadlines, thank you so much. And the promotion team, thank you for serving throughout this entire process. And that includes you, Brother Gary Porter, who should be standing right here, but he decided to step down, and I'm, I'm here instead. So, now behind me are some of the real heroes of Eastview. They spend, well deserved, they spend hours, and I don't want to, hours, that is not an overstatement, learning scriptures. They give up their nights, their afternoons, they give up weekends for quiz practice and quiz tournaments. Now, I've estimated that since the beginning of this campaign, Eastview quizzers have learned over 4,000 verses. That's amazing. Now, I also want to say we are quick to tout on their memorization and that they learn these verses. But, friends, there's so much more to it. They have to know the material, not just know the verse. They have to know who says it, who they say it to, what are they saying it about. It is so much more than just memorizing the scripture. But we started this campaign. We had one senior quiz team with the hopes, the goals of adding a junior team. Now, we're three short tonight. So as you can see, we have done so much more than just add a, one junior team. We now have a beginner team, a junior team, and two senior teams. Yes. Now keep in mind that two of these teams have actually made it to the national tournament, which is a massive undertaking. Now, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Now, God knew what we were going to need to do this. We needed more than quizzers. We needed quiz coaches. I do not believe in coincidence. I do not believe that the Bobbitt family came here by accident. Sister Ashton, Brother Jordan, thank you for allowing the Lord to lead you here to Eastview to coach our junior team. Thank you so much. And Brother and Sister Ellis... For those of you who don't know, Brother Ellis is a renowned quiz coach who had decided to sail into retirement. <laughs> but back in 2020, when our senior team started, he would just kind of show up for practices and help out and lend a hand here and there. He just couldn't help himself. He is now our senior quiz coach, does a phenomenal job, and we are so thankful for what they pour in to these kids, to these quizzers. Now, I'll be the first to tell you, I, I make no apologies if you get tired of hearing about our quizzers. We have made it official that Eastview is a Bible quizzing church. We have a phenomenal Bible quiz program. We are going to host tournaments. Matter of fact, we're hosting state finals this year for seniors. And we are going to continue into the future because this is our future. This is the future of our church. Not only that, this is the future of our movement. We don't know what ministries are going to come out of this. We don't know what preachers, pastors, missionaries, worship leaders, whatever the case may be. These are the hero, heroes of Eastview and these are our future. Now, when we relaunched the campaign in 2021, we had a monster balance in front of us, and that was the balance owed to the bank for our Family Life Center. I have that number. I've practiced it a few times today. I'm probably still going to mess it up. I'm not used to saying numbers this big. $812,857.84 in March of 2021 when we relaunched this campaign was the balance and our goal, our hope, our prayer was to have it paid off within the three years. Now, shortly after we relaunched, I did have someone come to me and said, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if we had this paid off within the, within the year. I don't remember exactly what I said, but I do remember the gist of what I thought. And it was not extremely positive. I was like, I will see. I, I'm believing with you, brother. You know, you know the kind of things we say. Now, most of, you, most of you know it's no secret the joke was on me because less than nine months later, Brother Hunt and Brother Bullard had the privilege to walk into the bank to make that final payment. I believe Joe Rich is forcing a smile right there. He's probably not real happy. 
Because he's probably doing the math in his head. He's a banker. And here's what he knew. He just lost a lot of interest. More than that, Brother Hunt. A lot more than $70,000. Might have been $70,000 that year. But in total... Now, this is just an estimate because we can't always see the future. And I'm willing to bet that this number is under. We probably saved about $500,000 over the, the lifetime of that loan if we would have paid it out directly. And the way interest rates have been, I am sure it is more than that. Now, friends, when I came to Eastview over 15 years ago, there was a lot of talk about one day having a family life center. I believe there might have even been plans at that point, but this was a project that had been on the books for, genera for decades, generations. And I'm so thankful for all of those that gave, that prayed, that maybe even just hoped for a facility like we have one day. But here's what we can say now. We have it. What's better than that, we own it. What's better than that is now we know what we're capable of. So I believe that when the time comes for the next building project, we won't need decades to plan. And we aren't going to need decades to build. And we aren't going to need decades to finance. My God. Now, I'm old enough to know that there are some of you that may not be as excited as others about all this. I've been around the block a time or two, but that's okay. Let me just remind you that while we were giving sacrificially, God was busy doing the miraculous. We cannot forget that there have been healings, jobs, raises, promotions, vehicles, and just God-given favor during these last three years. And I know what some of you are thinking. You're thinking, oh, that probably would have happened anyway. And you know what? You might be right, but we don't know. But here's what we do know. We gave. We worshiped. My God. And it did happen. And it's because of God. And it's through God. And we know that God is not done with us yet. All right, now listen, now I heard recently that numbers have no emotion. They are simply a reflection of data that has occurred. Now, numbers can't get excited for us, but we can get excited about numbers. My God. Now, we've given some numbers out. I'm going to give you one more. In 2021, when we relaunched, our total of dollar amount that was pledged was $1,218,000. $461.43. And let's see what the Lord has done. We are going to finish this celebration with a bang.
look what the Lord has done. I said, look what the Lord has done. Hallelujah. Somebody give praise for what the Lord has done. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I hear the words of the father of the prodigal say to the elder brother, it was meet or necessary that we make merry. It was necessary that we make a big deal. That in this little East Texas town, this little mid-sized to smaller East Texas church has impacted the world and is impacting its community and its children and its young people and the prodigals and the lost. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Don't, don't, you don't have to go anywhere. Amen. I'm not going to preach. I'm going to preach a mini, mini sermon. I'm just going to talk to you. I'm just going to give God the glory. Hallelujah. Because God is great, the 48th Psalm says. And greatly to be praised, Psalm 48, 1 says. Hallelujah. But then the psalmist says something about this great God. Because this is not a unique phrase to Scripture. The 145th Psalm says, Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. So this is not a unique thing, but I can't blow past that. Because what you've heard the last 15 minutes or so proves that God is great. And if my God is great, there's only one standard of praise. He's not worthy of mediocre praise. He's not worthy of ho-hum, average praise, a great God. Come on. He's worthy of great. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. I didn't know. I, 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 I envy these preachers, Brother Hunt, that know what they're going to preach weeks in advance. God leaves me to the last minute. And I have no clue. So on the platform this morning, the Lord gave me what I'm going to give you tonight. And it was Psalm 48. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. But here is where it becomes unique. Here is where the psalmist said, wait a minute. I want to tell you how this great God is to be greatly praised. Amen. In this context, he said, great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. In the city of our God and in the mountain of his holiness. The psalmist is talking about the ancient city of David, Jerusalem. But in our context in the New Testament, this is talking about the church. Hey man, anytime you see Jerusalem, the writers of the New Testament picked it up and said, wait a minute. Hey man, there's more to that than an old city that used to belong to the Canaanites. When King David, the worshiper, said, you know what? That needs to belong to us. Hey man, the previous generations left it unconquered. And when David became king, he said, not me. Whoever can get into that city, hey man, they'll get a blessing. And Joab said, watch what God can do. Hey man, in a few days, you can look what the Lord did the Lord took over that city and from that time forth it became known as the city of David hallelujah but not only that that city of course became famous even to this very day it has been a city that's been embattled it has been a city that's been fought over even to this very weekend drones and missiles were fired to obliterate that. Go all the way back thousands of years, even to present day. The enemy hates the ancient city of Jerusalem. It is a hot spot of battles because it's the most important city on the globe. But I'm here to tell you that in the New Testament, the heavenly Jerusalem is the church of the living God. So we're here at 1407 North Medford. And we call it Eastview United Pentecostal Church. Nothing wrong with that. That's what we've named it. It used to be called Herdy Pentecostal Church back in the 60s. 
That's what it says in the UPCI directory. That's where we tell people, where do you go to church? Eastview United Pentecostal Church. But you know what? That's just a name. And there might be a generation way on down the road that changes or alters that somehow. And that's okay. That doesn't really matter. Because really what's at 1407 North Medford is not just Eastview United Pentecostal Church. That's important. But my friend, what's at 1407 North Medford is the church of the living God. This is not just Eastview. This is the heavenly Jerusalem. There's more than brick and sheetrock and asphalt and about 200 people. This is where God does business in the city. And the psalmist said, when you praise the great God, be sure you give him great praise. But know this, that my house is a house of praise. It's a house to give God the greatest praise. Oh, it gets better. Verse number two. And this city, amen, it's beautiful for situation. Hallelujah. It's situated beautifully. Amen. In other words, where it was planted is a center of attention. I'm here to remind us all that the church should be the center of our life. It's not your career. It's not your hobbies and pursuits. It's not all those vacations. And thank God for that. But my friend, the most important thing going on in the Bullard household is the Jerusalem, in, in, which is the local church. Hey, I'm here to tell you that the local church is still the hope of the world. Come on. I'm thankful for what God is doing uh, in great churches in Pentecost out of state uh, and around the world. But we don't go there. Amen. Our local church uh, is the hope uh, of our community. And as goes the local church, uh, so goes the world. Uh, hallelujah. And so I want to keep it great uh, by giving my God great praise uh, in the city of our God. It's beautiful for situation. Oh, it's the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the sides of the north the city of the great king the new living translation says it is high and magnificent the whole earth rejoices to see it Mount Zion the holy mountain is the city of the great king verse 3 says God is known in her palaces for a refuge how many of you could say you know what I'm so glad that our church is a safe church I'm so glad our church is a refuge that no matter what you've been through or going through or where you're coming from. I can get inside the city. I can get inside the church and it is a refuge for my family. Oh, here we go. For lo, the kings were assembled. They passed by together. One rendering says the kings of the earth joined forces and advanced against the city. Enemy kings began to confederate together and they massed forces and began to attack the city of Jerusalem. This has happened countless times in history. But the psalmist said they saw it and so they marveled and they were troubled and hasted away. Fear took hold upon them there in pain as of a woman in travail. I'm here to tell the enemy, can I tell you, he hates the church. He hates that we're having church tonight. And he hates what we've been celebrating. But I got news for the enemy. We're just getting started. And so you might come against us with sword and spear and shield. But we come in the name of the Lord. Come on, I'm going to tell you something. When God gets great praise in the church, the enemy begins to turn and run. Come on, I pray that confusion breaks out in the camp of our enemies. I pray that confusion breaks out in the camp of your enemy. I pray that he'd hear a rumor or a noise and say, wait a minute. They're shouting for God in their city. Verse number eight. I'm skipping to verse number eight. Oh, this is a powerful psalm. As we have heard. Everybody say heard. That's talking about past tense. As we have heard. So have we seen in the city of the Lord of hosts, in the city of our God. God will establish it forever. The New Living, New Living says, we have heard of the city's glory, but now we have seen it for ourselves. The city of the Lord of heaven's armies. It is the city of our God, and he will make it safe forever. I think we need to pause for a moment and really think about what the word of God is saying. He said, we have heard, past tense, of the city's glory. This city called Eastview, or the new Jerusalem here, the spiritual Jerusalem, has a fantastic history and past. I started this afternoon to write down the saints that I knew of that have gone on to meet their reward. 
And I begin to think I'm going to leave somebody out. But church, there is an east view in the grave. Amen. At least their bodies there. They went on before us. And they're going ahead and paving the way and worship in heaven. Amen. There is a great past of saints of the living God. And I am so thankful, Mamie, that I am standing here tonight because of the efforts and the sacrifices of what God has done in the past. The psalmist said, we have heard what God has already done. Then I began to think of the pastors. 1961, D.R. Snyder, a very well-known preacher in East Texas. Thomas Bailey, Brother Jewel Rogers, Brother O.W. Williams, Brother Leon Wallace, Brother David Hunt, who is now still our senior pastor. And before we go any further, we've celebrated and shouted a lot tonight, Brother Daniel. But we need to stop and thank God for all the sacrifices that these saints and ministers have made for the city of God. They have hammered nails. They have mowed the churchyard. They painted walls. They set up chairs. They worked fundraisers, led prayer meetings, taught Bible studies, taught Sunday school classes, sang the songs inside, and won souls to God. And we are here tonight, Brother Robert, because of those men and women. God, I want to stop and give you praise for, Lord, all you've already done in this city. Come on, come somebody thank God for those lives. Come on, they didn't have it as good as us. Come on, they didn't have it as nice as we have. But thank you, Lord, for what you've already done. I give honor to all of these men and women, amen, that have sacrificed, that have stayed up late, that have given time, money, resources, fasted, prayed for us. But look at the verse of Scripture. Again, Psalm 48, 8 of the New Living. We have heard of the city's glory, but now we have seen it for ourselves. It's not just a historic lesson of some museum. It is a reality that we can say we have heard it in the past, but we're seeing it in the present. It's not just a history story. It is what God is doing here and now in the church of the living God. I'd mention this. Back in 2019, it was September. Brother Doug Klein, this was preaching in Tyler. Someone asked me, can y'all have him come preach for you? He has no place to preach. He's from out of state. He has no clue about East Texas. He doesn't know about Eastview. Had never preached at Eastview. We, we arranged for him to come that following Sunday. He came in 2019 for the first time. And he came, and I want you to, and we're going to play just a two-minute clip because there's a lot of people had, that had never heard this. This is what this man of God declared to Eastview, the city of God. Three things I'm going to tell you this church needs to do as you're coming to the altar tonight. Get close enough, I can see you. The Lord spoke this to me this afternoon. Three things that if you'll do them, this visitation will continue and will grow. You have got to be liberal and aggressive in your praise and worship. Yeah. Some of y'all need to make up your mind. If it starts getting a little quiet, you up your amens. Just not going to let it happen. It's a Pentecostal church. Yeah. Liberal and aggressive in your praise and worship. Liberal and aggressive in your prayer. Yeah. When you come to prayer meeting, I went to one church and preached, went to their pre-service prayer meeting, got up that night and said, I appreciate y'all coming to prayer. There's about 50 people in there, but God help you, I nearly backslid in your prayer meeting. It was so quiet, nobody was praying. When you come to prayer meeting, you got to open your mouth. Your voice is your connection to the spirit realm. Word, that's the great revelation of the oneness. Word was made flesh. The word's got to be made flesh. It's got to get in our mouth. Prayer. We got to pray it. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. So we got to be liberal and aggressive in our praise, liberal and aggressive in our prayer, and liberal and aggressive in our giving. If you'll do those three things, if this will become a praise and worship, atmosphere elevated, prayer elevated, and you don't get tight and uptight and all worried about giving. This is your church. Amen. This is yours. This is where you're going to be saved, where your family's going to be saved. Amen. This is worth the biggest lion's share of all the money you got in the world. 
Amen. Your house is burning down. The rest of your stuff's going to go by way of the world. Uh, but this is eternal business over here. I want my best gifts to go into the house of God. You conquer those three things, there ain't, I'm prophesying, there ain't a devil in hell that'll stop the revival of this church. There is nothing. The avalanche will be so great. The wave will be so strong. The flow will be so liberal that the devil himself won't be able to stop. Come on and give the Lord some high praise everywhere. That was not just for 2019. That was for 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023, and 2024. And if the Lord tarries, it's going to be for 25, 26, 27, 2030, 2040, 2070. When you're dead and gone, if we will become liberal and aggressive. Hallelujah. But look at the scripture again. At verse number 8 of Psalm 48, 8, New Living. He said, it's the city of the Lord of heaven's armies. It is the city of our God. He will make it safe forever. Hebrews 12, 22 connects here to prove what I'm preaching tonight. Because the writer of Hebrews says, speaking of the church of the living God, but you are coming to Mount Zion, under the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. And watch this. And to an innumerable company of angels. New Living says, no, you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to countless thousands of angels in a joyful gathering. You're not just the only one celebrating tonight. There might be several billion angels in this room right now celebrating the goodness of our great God. Jesus said when one person repents, heaven goes wild. I'm here to tell you there's more than just a men and women and kids in the church. There is a joyful gathering of the of the heavenly angels of God. Hallelujah. But verse number 12, skipping down. Verse number 12, and I'm almost done. Walk about Zion. Go round about her. And tell, that word tell means to count. It means to look around. Don't just talk about it. Move around. Hallelujah. I bought this before I moved to Tyler. This is a measuring wheel. And this is kind of crazy. You know what the brand of this thing is? Read it. Lufkin. No joke. This is the brand of a measuring wheel. And when you measure it, there's a little odometer that tells you how many feet you've gone. And then you want to measure something, do the simple geometry, length times width, and you can measure the square footage or of a yard or a house or a building. Hey Amen. The psalmist said, you need to know how great and how big this great God is that's to be greatly praised. And you got to begin to consider. you begin. got to, wow, wow. Am I reading it right? Am I reading it right? We blew the number. Wow, wow. Wow. Walk about Zion. I'm telling you, hey amen, this church is great because our God is great. This church has an excellent future because our God is in control of that future. But it leads into the last verse I want to use tonight. Because the psalmist said, mark you well, her bulwarks. Sister Elizabeth, can you come help me? Mark you well, her bulwarks. Consider her palaces or her citadels that you may tell it to the generation following. The reason we have made such a big deal tonight. And our team is reporting there's so much else they, for time's sake we cut it down. It's because uh, there are children and grandchildren and great grandchildren uh, that need to know uh, how great uh, this church uh, is uh, when God is greatly praised. <laughs> if you cross your arms and yawn in God's face and say, well, not that big a deal. You know, what's next? I wonder what they're going to tell us next. Can I tell you, the psalmist said, uh, you got to get mobile. Uh, you got to put some shoes on and walk around uh, and walk around and say, wow, wow. But don't just talk about it uh, among yourselves. Uh, come on. He said, get the generation, get your children uh, and tell them uh, we got to get to church. Uh, we got to praise God at the church. Uh, we got to get to pre-service prayer. Uh, we got to amen the preacher. Uh, we got to come to the altar. Uh, we got to give in the offer. Why? Because God is great and greatly to be praised. Where? In the city. In the city. In the city of our God. 
Someone said earlier that it was 10 years ago, I think it was Brother Hunt, that this church broke ground on the Family Life Center. Wow. Did you know that the Lord quickened this to me today? On May the 18th, 2014, I preached from this text. And I don't know, Brother Conlon, if I preached from this text at this church since that time. But in 2014, next month will be 10 years ago that I preached from Psalm 48. And if I recall correctly, I got the hand of my daughter then. I was an evangelist. I wasn't a pastor, obviously. I was an evangelist here. And I got the hand of my 8-year-old then. Yeah. Yeah. Eight-year-old daughter. She's 18 now. And my eight-year-old daughter. And if I call, recall, I began to walk uh, around the church. I did not know I would pastor one day. Uh, amen. As an illustration uh, to tell uh, the future generations uh, how great this church was. Uh, now I understand why God laid that text uh, on my heart in 2000. Uh, amen. 14. Uh, and now here we are 10 years later. Elizabeth, uh, this is the church of the living God. Uh, this is the city of the great king. Uh, people get the the Holy Ghost here. God has called you here. God has a plan for you and your children and your peers. I wish somebody stand to your feet and give God the highest praise. God is great and greatly to be praised. Where? In the city. In the city. In the city. In the church. Come on. If you can't praise him in church, where are you going to praise him? If you can't get loud at church, where in the world can you get loud? Come on. It's the safest place to worship. It's the safest place to praise. It's the safest place to give God all of the praise. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I want our wow kids to come up close to the platform. If you're in wow, come on up to the platform. Get as close to the platform as you can. If you're in wow, children's ministry. Amen. All those in children, come up clo real close to the platform. We're almost touching the platform. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. Look at them. Amen. Look at these heroes. Look at these awesome young men and women. These are our brothers and the sisters in the Lord. Church, don't look down upon them and think, well, you know, they're just an afterthought. No. Can I tell you, it is very likely, Sister Vivian, that this group has more faith than a lot of you. That hurt when it's true. Because they're not cynical and jaded and been through a lot of trials. And so therefore they just believe God for anything. Come on, they can lay hands on you and you receive a miracle. They need to know how great God is in the church. They're not an afterthought. This is the next generation. And we need to have a great church. Not just for me and mom and dad. We need to have a great church for Colton. Amen. Hallelujah. And for Audrey. And for Caspian. We need to have a great church for them. I want our young people to come in. The young people here. If you're in the student ministry, come in behind them. Amen. Look at these awesome. Our church youth group is phenomenal. They are so on fire. Amen. Hallelujah. I am so glad. Amen. Brother Jordan, I'm glad you're here tonight. Amen. What a hero you are. What a trooper. Hallelujah. Come on down, Brother Jaden. These also are not afterthoughts. These also are not just lesser saints. They're just as much a man or woman of God as a 50, 60, or 70-year-old elder. They're just as much a saint of God in this church. They can see miracles, signs, and wonders. They are reaching their world. They are, come on, they're tearing down strongholds. <laughs> Hallelujah. Our hyphen, is there any hyphen here tonight? And I'm going to stop at hyphen. Hyphen, come in behind our young people. Amen. Our hyphen, our college and career. Amen. Church, you know how fast five or ten years goes by. Come on, some elders, look at me. Five years, you're blinking, it's gone. Ten years, it's gone. These people right here. Amen. These people right here. Come on down, Brother Shane. Are going to be, some of them are already leading. But you realize this is reality if the Lord tarries. And add ten years to your age, by the way. Oh, that's not a bad, that's a sad thought, isn't it, Stacey? <laughs> Add 10 years to your age, whatever that is. 
but add 10 to their age. And they're going to be the Sunday school teachers and the praise singers. Amen. And leading service and maybe preaching. Or they may be planning a church somewhere else. Or they might be a missionary somewhere else. And I just thought it was fitting, Brother Gilliam, to end this mini sermon tonight with us celebrating and thanking God not only for what he's done in the past in these past immediate past three years but church hear my bird tonight reality is if the Lord tarries and he may I don't see how he could but he may the reality is they're going to need a lot of help all caps let me repeat it again they're going to need a lot of help they're going to need a lot of mercy a lot of patience a lot of grace come on I wish somebody help me right now they're going to need a lot of understanding they're going to need a lot of prayer they're going to need a lot of support because it's not just about you and your spouse. It's about the next generation. Church, would you come in behind these? Amen. And would you lay your hands on them? And would you pray the blessings of God on the future of our church? Come on. You're not the future of the church alone. Amen. This is reality. This is the future. Come on. Adopt a kid. Adopt a young person. Amen. And begin to pray that God would bless them. And God would use them. And God would anoint them. We're debt-free, positioned for the future because of them. Amen. Come on, it's for them. Hallelujah. Come on, pray the mercy of God. Pray the blessing. Pray the protection of God. Come on, walk amongst them. Push your way through. Push your way through. Lift your hands, kids. Lift your hands, Cain. In the name of Jesus. You're the future generation. Walk among them. Press your way through the crowd. Take your liberty. You don't have to be a preacher. Walk amongst them. Press your way through the crowd. Press your way through the crowd. Come on, lay your hands on them. Use them, God. Use them, God. Use them, God. We make room for them, God.
That's it, boys and girls. That's it, boys and girls. That's it, young people. Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me just in time. I'm going to praise His name. Each day is just the same. Come on and praise Him. Look what the Lord. If you need the Holy Ghost children, you can receive the Holy Ghost right now. Mom and Dad, if you need a renewing, lift your hands. There's a lot of faith coming out of this crowd right here. There's a lot of spiritual energy coming out of this. Come on, they're praying in the Holy Ghost. Look at these girls right here. Brother Hunt, our future is secure. Our future is safe. Hallelujah. They're praying in the Holy Ghost. They're tearing down strongholds. Go ahead, Audrey. Go ahead, Audrey. Go ahead, Gunner. <laughs> Woo! Come on, Mom and Dad. Walk amongst the crowd. Press your way through. Macy is a strong warrior for God. Hallelujah. Garrett, God's got great plans for you, son. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The enemy will not win. The enemy will not prevail, Wayne. Because God is in this city. God is in the midst of her. God's got his hand on the city. That's it, kids. Go ahead, pray. You're doing battle. You're doing war. Could these kids be doing war for your marriage? Could these kids be doing war for mom and dad? Brother Robert, could it be? These kids are doing full war, and mom and dad will be blessed. Yeah.
receive you the Holy Ghost. Receive your renewal of the Holy Ghost. hallelujah hallelujah liberal and aggressive liberal and aggressive going all out blowing it out not stopping not backing up not backing down no retreat no turning back all the way pedal to the metal hallelujah can't go back Tim can't go back I did not have good notes, Brother Robert. And I began to realize God was going to just want me to walk in the Holy Ghost. So that's what we're doing. And I love it when it turns out that way. Amen. Keep praying, kids. You're tearing down strongholds in mom and dad's life. You might be tearing down a stronghold in mom and dad's life. Come on. You may be birthing a burden in mom and dad's life. You might be helping mom and dad's marriage. The faith coming out of this crowd is huge. But if you're near a Sunday school teacher, if you're near someone working in WOW, would you pray for Brother Glenn Jones, Brother Conlon Jones, Sister Jennifer Jones? If you're a Sunday school teacher or help in WOW, come on, lay hands. Brother Ellis works with quizzers. The devil hates the next generation, and he hates those that work with them. But in Jesus' name, God, I pray reinforcements. Come on, pray for somebody that works with young people or children right now. Pray for somebody that works with young people or children. Come on, put your hand on their back or their head and pray a blessing, a protection. They're weary. They get weary. They get tired. Bless our Sunday school teachers, God. Bless our wow workers. Bless our youth pastor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. The city's at war tonight. The city's at war tonight. I got news for any enemy king. I got news for any enemy, enemy king uh, that wants to come against us. Uh, you better think twice. You better think twice. Because uh, there's more than just people here. Uh, this is the Lord of heaven's armies. I said, this is the Lord of heaven's armies. There's more than just saints here. There's an innumerable company of angels, Brother Daniel. And we're not worshiping angels. But God dispatches them at times in the Word of God, Brother Derek, to fight spiritual battles, to show up as reinforcements. That was in our text in Psalm 48 and in my text in Hebrews 12. I believe before we leave tonight, we need to make a push for war right now. Come on in both of those texts. It said that the city has got the angel armies of God. Come on, they're helping you fight right now. They're showing up as reinforcements right now. Come on, lift your hands and pray a victory over our children and over your home right now. God is great and greatly to be praised in the church, in my family, in my kids. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pray for your husband, your wife.
did it.